I was the last surviving employee in a toxic company. When they tried to extort me, I burned the company to the ground. Yeah, screw capitalism. Burn it all. Burn the beard. I was working in an organization that was super toxic, so much so that we had a revolving door. Most employees only lasted a few months. If that you have a crazy employee turnover, just don't take it. To counter this, our management put a three months notice into everyone's contract, including the existing employees. You know this company's good when they force you to stay after you want to leave. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, it's not strictly illegal where this happened, but it is very unusual. Usual. I believe the idea behind it was that it would make it harder for the employees to find a job outside as potential employers didn't usually want to wait for three months. Yeah, they want to just lock these people down so they basically have slaves. This didn't work as most people just simply quit and waited a month or two before starting their job hunt. Now, I was there for almost four years. I needed the money, so I put up with whatever abusive crap was thrown at me. It sounds like a terrible company. It doesn't sound fun. Zero fun, sir. All right. My boss was a guy we'll call Vince. Now, Vince was not particularly good, but he sometimes respected the fact that I was the most tenured grunt in this organization. Congratulations! Put that on the placard. Do note that after two years, I was doing a lot of additional work to my official responsibilities, primarily because I was the only one who knew how to do it. Everyone else who knew had already left. This will be important later. Enter Rajesh, also not his actual name. Rajesh was poached by a somewhat infamous company and was literally flown in from a different continent. Rajesh was brought into the company to strategically improve our division. This was quite strange given that our division generated the most profits. That is strange. Now, within months, Rajesh made the environment even more toxic. He pulled Vince's team under him and got Vince fired, and he actively encouraged us grunts to spy on each other. It's bad enough being a grunt, but when you can't even trust your fellow grunts? Your fellow gruntmen? Like, who do you have but your fellow grunts? But your grunthood. Rajesh also had it out for me from day one. He started making my life much harder than the others. This culminated in him taking me aside and telling me that I'm not pulling my weight. Now, at this point, I was doing quite well in the organization, and I had been doing a lot of additional work critical to our business since I only knew certain systems and processes. So I was quite angry. I started looking around, but fortunately, I was able to find a job that was willing to wait the three months. Okay, so, so this he is has good. it out. Let's go. So it was my turn to take Rajesh aside and tell him, I quit. Boy, Rajesh was pissed. He went from denial, you can't quit, to negotiation. What if I gave you a raise at the end of the year before finally acceptance? Like, give me a raise right now if you want me to stay. Hey, in 12 months, we'll give you more money, but it's going to be worth the same amount of money. Thus, I was serving my notice and working away like an honest bee, my usual work and the additional work. At this point, I was called in by HR and told that Rajesh wanted me gone. It's like, hey, I really think we should break up. And then the person you're breaking up was like, no, I'm breaking up with you. The insane part was that they wanted me to pay the company the salary from the two and a half months that I would be missing. If they're firing. They're firing. OP, yeah, that's making sense. It makes no sense. I obviously refused, then went back in to check the contract. Turns out both parties had to agree to leave early. Otherwise, the company would have to compensate the person leaving. The company has to pay OP if they want to fire OP earlier than the three months. Reverse Uno. The next day, I stopped doing almost all all of my work. I logged in and logged out my hours and did Jack Diddley. I stopped doing any of the additional work I'd been doing as well and started taking it really, really slow on my primary job responsibilities. I love this. Since no one else understood the details of what I did, I knew it would be very hard for Rajesh or HR to prove that I was doing any of this on purpose. So I sat back with popcorn. Soon, there was a complete meltdown all around. Rajesh would pull me into meetings and scream and try to bully me, and I would say nothing but smirk in his face. I gotta listen to you, Rajesh. Take that. Next, they tried to have someone else learn the additional work I used to do from me so that way they could do what I was doing. Remember how I said earlier that I was the only one who knew some of these old systems and processes? Well, now I claim that I, you know, I, I can't quite remember. Yeah, it's really hard. You know, I got amnesia. Well, now that I claimed that I didn't remember any of them, there was obviously 
going to be no handover. Rajesh could do nothing as none of this had been my responsibility or part of my contract since the leadership had only been too happy to see me do this for free. Soon my workplace turned into a dumpster fire. HR and Rajesh smartened up and offered me to buy me out of my notice if I cooperated and helped my transition. But I refuse. Let's go, OP. Then to twist the knife further, I started having meetings with fellow grunts. Remember, everyone was always a newbie and encouraging them to leave as well. Indirectly, though, so I couldn't be implicated. HR tried to get me to leave twice more, but I ended up serving the full three months. <laughs> remember the mutual consent from the contract. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. If you've been in a similar situation, I, I have to imagine one person watching this has been- Yeah, I want to know your worst jobs. Yeah, your worst you know? job experience. Yeah. Like, how did that go? What did you What did you do to get out of it? But yeah, what do you think here? Is, is OP the a-hole? No, I mean, it sounds like OP honestly is doing a good thing by- preventing all these other workers for getting abused in the same way. Like these sound like some pretty predatory business practices. Very much so. So read your contract, read right? Always read it. And people will be like, oh, like I thought we were doing this in good faith. Don't matter. Nope. Have the contract there. You know, yes. the contract is there when times are bad, not when times are good. Exactly. So that, that's what I learned from the story. You know, that is a great lesson to take away. Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend that I'm his mommy because he's a little boy that doesn't know how to fold his tidy whities <laughs> Mommy, I want an apple juice. I started seeing a guy about three weeks ago. And let me be clear, we have known each other for some time because he was a friend of my cousin. He asked me out a few weeks ago and I said yes. Very nice. I've known him since I was like 15. I also know his family too because our moms were colleagues. So anyway, he came to my house five days ago to pick me up because we're having a picnic date, which is also cute. I think a great idea. I was in the living room watching a kid's show called Phineas and Ferb. There's a hundred and forty-eight summer vacation. Cooling on is ended. This cartoon has had a huge impact on my life. I still watch it whenever my mood is off so that I can just cling to this innocent child inside of me. I was laughing at a part and he was standing next to me. And he looked at me and was a little confused with this judging expression. He asked me if my nephew was in the house. I told him no. Then he asked me, who's watching the cartoon since all my family members are adults? I told him, hey, I'm watching this cartoon. I really like this cartoon. I then proceeded to tell him that I still watch this particular cartoon because it was part of my childhood and I have some good memories linked to it. Like she's like opening up. She's telling yeah, me, hey, this is like know? why this means so much to of me. Of course. Yeah, just trying to like give a little insight into her childhood. He told me that's embarrassing and ridiculous. He told me that I'm a 24-year-old woman. Why am I watching something kids watch? I need to grow up. He's literally like, you know how like eight, five and eight year olds are like, I'm not a baby anymore. Yeah. This guy is like in his 20s. Like, I'm not a baby anymore. Yeah, I don't watch cartoons. This is for babies. I'm 24 and three quarters. And Come on. <laughs> yeah. This really bothered me. It would bother me too. I don't think there is an age limit to watching cartoons. Since that day, he would make fun of me. Whenever we go to a restaurant, he would jokingly order from the kids menu. He would talk to me in a baby voice if I'm a kid. Whenever I would tell him to stop, he would say, Aw, is you OP man? How cute. Dude, I'm literally cringing at this baby voice I'm making right now. And sometimes even using phrase like young lady, it was really frustrating. Sam, you know, we talk about a lot of really hard situations on this podcast. Oh, baby, the hardest. And you know, Sam, that's not the only thing that we need hard in this world. Fellas, if you're trying to play a little game of hide the zucchini and you want that zucchini to be nice, firm and strong, I think you're going to want to hear about our, our next sponsor. We are working with Blue Chew, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Chew tablets. It is the best option to get your wiener stiff. And you might be like, oh, I don't need it. But hey, you never know until you try. You could already be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but what if you were Superman? What if you were Tom Brady throwing spirals every freaking day in the bedroom? That's right, guys. Blue Chew wants you to have better sex. And I do too, personally. We want your dongs rock hard. Discover all your options at bluechew.com. Just chew it and do it, baby. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code OKOP at checkout. Just pay five bucks shipping. I'm like free, like actually free. That's bluechew.com. 
promo code OKOP to receive your first month free. Come on. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And I just want to thank BlueChew one more time for sponsoring this podcast and making the hard things hard and our life easy. Oh, yes. Back to the episode. And today, we went to a party. His friends were there, too. I was meeting them for the first time. He introduced me and said to his friends that he needs to be locked up because he's technically dating a minor. Hi, 911. Um, I have a child molester uh, right Chris here. Chris Hansen? We've got him. <laughs> Get him. He then tells them how I still watch cartoons, and they all laughed. Now I'm like, Opie's friends are kind of quacks too. Yeah, some of them find it awkward. He also made fun of my height too. I'm 5'4", he's 6'1". He proceeds to shuffle my hair like most people do kids. And I got mad and told him, it's funny how he makes fun of me being a kid, yet he still needs mommy to do his laundry. His smile wiped off of his face. I further said, well, at least this kid knows how to keep herself clean and knows how to drive, unlike him who failed his drive driving test two times he's young and stupid Open. the room was silent later when i got home i got calls from my cousin that i overreacted and embarrassed him in front of his friends i think the clap back is deserved she said he was right to make fun of me because who the hell watches cartoons when they are adults i told her i am not interested in entertaining boys who feel like they can make fun of anyone they want but when someone does the same to them they act like little babies <laughs> i guess this is it probably the shortest relationship i have been to and there's a little update oh i want to know what john thinks but also hey put it in the comments below what do y'all think we need to know but john tell us uh i think everyone here is the a-hole except op not liking cartoons. I don't know what's wrong with all of you guys. Yeah. Well, my cousin again texted me. She told me he was upset. And after the party, he went home with his girl best friend and spent the night there. She wants me to apologize because apparently I'm letting a good guy slip. Well, let him slip. Let him slip into a volcano. Pretty sh I, I I feel like he maybe hooked up with his girl best friend. Yes. That's what it sounds like. That's great. Like, literally, and the fact like, that cousin is like still. Yeah, you're letting a good one slide. Uh, how about someone who doesn't cheat on me and like mock Insult me endlessly? Me. Literally. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Come on. Come on. My husband wants to punish our daughter for cheating, but there's only one problem. She's only seven years old. What does she do? Hold the hands with another little boy? My husband and I have a seven-year-old daughter together, Layla. A few months ago, Layla got a boyfriend, Lucas. To have a quote unquote boyfriend at seven, that's er that's early. Some people had them when they were five. Did you have a girlfriend at five? May or may not had a shorty. They're both seven years old. So this is obviously not a real relationship. Says you, mama. Now, these two just hold hands sometimes. Scandalous. And they drew each other hearts for Valentine's Day. This week, though, Layla was apparently holding hands with another boy. <laughs> Sam is going hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, My okay, okay. God. And this other boy also sent Layla a Valentine's Day love letter. Dang, Layla's like John when he was five. Lucas took offense to all this. We found out because Lucas's parents called us. They told us that Lucas won't be coming over this Saturday like originally planned because he is mad at Layla. I can understand, Lucas, you know? My husband wants us to punish Layla and wants me to have a talk with her about faithfulness okay i agree with half of that yeah punisher <laughs> <laughs> at first i thought my husband was joking but no he was serious he says that layla cheated on lucas and i as her mother should do something about it i told my husband that layla is seven not a cheater and i won't treat her as such i love how you have to say that layla is seven come on he then accuses me of raising a cheater and encouraging the bad behavior so am i the a-hole for wanting to punish layla ladies and gentlemen i think you need to tell us what you think or if you've raised a cheater but sam have you raised a cheater what are your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> all right well first of all twist i think maybe the husband's cheating oh because they always say in a bunch of our stories it's yes. like uh, the, the accuser who is accusing that person of cheating is usually self-conscious about their own cheating that yeah. is such a, i i honestly totally think that's very very possible i think that good could be catch. a case wow Second, though, yep. second, second, second. Don't I don't agree with punishment. I don't agree this person is a cheater. But what I do agree with is like just having this conversation, like I said, totally I think is an a-hole to call the seven year old a cheater. 
a-hole move to like call the mom the the razor of a cheater (laughs) um but the fact that it happened i think it i think it opens up a conversation which i actually think could benefit the the daughter so i say op not an a-hole father a-hole seven-year-old daughter also not an a-hole case closed my mom forced me to stay infertile and now i can't have kids so i'm gonna get my revenge by hiring an army of babies Mm -hmm. to invade her village and take her land Uh control the fiefdom (laughs) my mom is forcing me to not have children i'm in my early 30s i got my first period when i was nine years old and they've always been gruesome Imagine like the shining, like the elevator doors opening and this blood rushing out. out. Yoinks. More blood than anyone could ever imagine. Cramping so bad that I had to miss school and couldn't eat or drink or do anything because the pain was so bad. Damn, do periods get that bad? I I, yeah, I feel like I've heard of similar kind of situations. That's crazy. If you've had a crazy bad period, let us let us know. Put in the comments. Drop it in the comments. We know. We see you, ladies. We see you, ladies. (laughs) Seventy percent of you watching OKOP. We love you. In my mother's eyes, I was a faker, making things up for attention or to get out of tests. She refused to take me to see doctors or anything. Wow. I wasn't even allowed pain meds. Well, when I moved in with my then boyfriend at 27, he convinced me to go see a doctor because... That wasn't healthy, which I mean, probably not to be just like gushing like the the Red Sea, you know, all yeah. the time. At least doesn't hurt to check. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's like hurting a ton. And I did. I later got diagnosed with a rare reproductive issue. I'm vague for privacy that essentially could have been fixed if caught earlier. Also, if anyone has any ideas of what this rare uh, this rare thing is, <laughs> Sam always wants to know the details. I want to know the details. They're pertinent. But the thing is, it wasn't caught. The issue had gone on for long enough that the damage was pretty much irreparable. In the end, I was basically given the choice of surgery A, which would leave me infertile with less complications and a lower fatality rate, or surgery B, which would leave me fertile, but with a higher risk of complications slash death due to the severity of my issue. So John, and all of you, which surgery would you choose? Surgery A, or surgery B. Sam, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to have a hot take. Hot take. Uh, I'm going with A. I want to keep living. Okay. It's I would love to know preference. what everyone else would choose. <laughs> but uh, I think OP is with you. I chose surgery A. I can no longer have biological children. My then boyfriend and I are now married and we're looking into other options to have a child. We're heavily leaning towards adoption and I confided in my mother about this. Big mistake. Oh. Don't tell your mom anything. Yep. She started scolding me and basically told me that I had to have biological children. She told me that if I didn't have bio (laughs) kids, then I was a failure of a woman and how dare you let the bloodline die? The audacity or something like that. (laughs) She told me that if we adopted, then she would do everything in her power to make me and my husband look terrible. So the adoption fails. So she's trying to actively sabotage like them having kids. What kind of mother would you possibly be to do this to your own child? A bad one. A terrible one. The icing on the cake is she told me that I should just reverse a surgery. Well, I can't do that. It's physically impossible. It's not like just getting your tubes tied. I literally no longer have a uterus or (laughs) ovaries or any of it. There is no way to reverse this surgery. I mean, do you, what do you say to your mom? What do you say to your mom? Like, what, what do you do? You hire an army of babies and then. Yes. And take the fiefdom. Take the fiefdom. I mean, I think you say, mom, fuck off. Yeah, for real. And maybe like record her and say, I'm going to use this against you in court, bro. Ooh. I went off on her and I explained that, you know, if she were a competent parent who actually did her job, then maybe I wouldn't be infertile. Mm-hmm. You know, and Facts. Like, and like when she ex- like explain, like I feel like when OP was like, "Hey, like I have these super periods where I'm expelling more blood than a teenage boy expels blood into his dick when he's having <laughs> boners constantly." Then maybe I wouldn't have this issue. I called her a terrible mom and a terrible person. I told her that if I ever do adopt a child, she would never get to meet them. Dang. She went silent. Damn, that's like she's laying down the law and then hung up. She hasn't said a word to me since. But now every woman in my family is calling me a useless bitch and a horrible daughter. God. Does she know what the mom said, though? Like, do all these people know? Do they know context? I doubt it. I doubt it. Even family I haven't seen since I was a baby are calling me a bitch. Now I'm wondering if I went too far. It has to end at some point. And also think about this. This is just the tip of the iceberg oh, for yeah. all the stuff. So like, I don't know. Does anyone have mothers like this? Like, I pray that you don't. But Please don't. 
don't. If you do, give us those juicy details. Yeah, let us in know. In the comments, please. Um, so what should OP do? You could argue that it's too harsh to completely cut her out. I think it's kind of tip of the iceberg. There's yeah. probably more that the mom did to her. But I also think the threat to cut her out. The threat, yeah. Is honestly all that is needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe if it continues. And See if she fixes her act. I agree. 